Bob Ryan, Dale Arnold in for DNC. The texters asked if uh, if Chris Kamen was going to get bought oh. out. I, I mean, I think it's much more likely that the the big that the Celtics are seeking got bought out by Denver yesterday, Ronnie Turioff. Mm. Uh, I can't imagine that now the NBA kind of owns and runs the New D- Orleans. New Orleans. Uh, well, certainly you would take you would like to have Kamen. Sure. Kamen, Kamen's a but could not the, well could the no- league Hold its head up straight if they allowed that to happen. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, obviously, I, this is a very dicey situation. Anything to do with New Orleans, as we learn, is dicey, and I, 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 I can't even answer that question. But I would love. Would I like to have came in? Yeah. Is he a great? No. Is he? A, but in the world of, of where there are very few legitimate centers, he is, in fact, an all-star level center. You know, and uh, uh, he, he would improve the situation greatly. How could the how could the NBA justify yeah. buying out an all star caliber center? I, I, I so how do they just how, how do they justify anything? They they do what they want to do with that team and 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 don't have to worry about answering to anybody. I mean, I guess that that's about the, the size of it. You you want to preserve a team that's worthwhile for the new owner you know, to want to have, and I, I that's the one thing you, you want. You shouldn't have allowed Chris Paul to allow be dealt assets, away. Then I know. I mean, you say you'd like to think that I should amend that. You'd like to think that they would want to preserve a team that would make it attractive for a buyer that want in a difficult market. I'm skeptical that New Orleans can support anything other than a football team. I mean, let's it's it's easy to and I'm be very sentimental about New Orleans and I'm as big a New Orleans fan. I'm looking forward obviously to going here next week for the final four as I always love to go to New Orleans. But I can understand how they can support football. But uh, it's asking them a lot to support. I don't I don't I, I just don't I I don't think it's viable. I don't think the New Orleans the Hornets are a viable concept. I really don't. Is Ronnie Turioff as as good as the Celtics can expect to be able to, to fill that better? spot that Chris Wilcox We're had? We're talking about somebody that may or may not be as good as Chris Wilcox. I don't think he's as good. I don't think he's even as good. So, but it, it's just this is coming off a broken hand. They're desperate for a big body, a big you know, it's a big. That's the way we you know the game is. Bigs. He's a big. Capital B. He's a big. He's a generic big who happens to speak French. I mean, that's. I mean, he's a. He's just a generic big. He's nothing special. But they're desperate. They're asking Kevin Garnett. The last thing on earth that he wants to do is be thought of as a five man, a center in the NBA, or play anything resembling a classic center position. He spent fourteen. No, how many years now? Seventeen years. You know, redefining what a seven footer can be. He doesn't want to be a conventional seven footer. He doesn't want to bang. He doesn't want to do that. That's not what he does. It's not. And he's miserable. I don't think he's happy at all playing center. Well, you bring up an interesting point, and I was going to ask you about this. Um, you hear whisperings. I'll put it that way. Whisperings is probably the right word, because I, I don't know how, how valid this is, that um, that group is not necessarily happy at how this is all coming to a close here, and that it is not necessarily a mm. happy place to be right now. Well, they're used to success, and I don't think they, uh, you know, when games, I, I was disturbed just as a fan. Reading, and I was in, uh, I was away, you know, once again, that Golden State game. They come off two nice wins, you know, they beat the Clippers. That's a good win for them, beating the Clippers. They're not favored to beat the Clippers right. in Clipper land. They went out and beat them. It was nice. And they go to Golden State and they get hammered. Get waxed. Uh, against a team that is missing like three of its four best players, something like along those lines. Yep. And then I'm reading, you know, Gary Washburn, who I've just come to admire, is a terrific colleague. He's an excellent, excellent basketball guy and writer. And for us, and I'm happy we have him on our team at the Globe. And I'm reading about, you know, this attitude. They just mailed it in. They they mailed it in. Doc had to admit that they didn't play. So how can you, what, what's he, who are they now in their status in life uh, and, and, their, and their standings situation? Who are they to mail in any games now in this West Coast trip? No excuses are allowed. I don't care about travel. I don't care about... No, no, no. I didn't like that. And then Denver wasn't a whole lot better. The rebounding thing is a joke. Now, that may be just... They stink at rebounding, but I... some uh, uh, As Doc pointed out, a lot of those rebounds were what they like, like to call now those 50-50 bouncing balls. Right. Okay. And they lost them all to Kenneth Fareed, you know, and who's a wonderful rebounder. Anybody who watched college basketball knew that last year. So anyway, I don't like this. So if they're unhappy, well... Too damn bad, you know. But uh, but they're caught bringing it on themselves. They have to have a better effort than this. And and now uh, that's why I'm really curious to see how they react tonight. Sports Radio WEEI now on ninety three point seven FM in Boston.